Okay, in this video, I am gonna go over the toolbar in DaVinci Resolve. This toolbar with all of these buttons. So if you don't know anything about these, then perfect. This video is for you. The first button that we are gonna talk about is this one, the selection mode. So just like it sounds, when you have this selected, it lets you select your clips and move them around on your timeline. You can move them on to different tracks on the timeline. You can do whatever you want. You can look at the metadata and the inspector and do some cool edits, you know, but this is your main selection tool when you want to make any sort of adjustment to your clip. Um, this one, the trim edit mode, is going to allow you to basically slip the clip forward or backward. So, for example, let me trim this up, okay? So I'm going to trim this to be like a 10 second clip or so. And so this is going to be what it looks like. It's her feet and then she starts to walk. Okay, so that's the clip. That might have been a little bit loud, my bad. <laughs> what I can do with this tool is instead of like extending this out and then trimming this so that it starts right here, I can instead use this tool to avoid all of those steps. So let me undo this. And now I will select this trim edit mode and then I will hover over my clip and wait for that icon to show up, the brackets closing in on two arrows pointing outward. And then I will click and drag my mouse over to the left, pushing it backward, so to speak. And you can see that the frames are going into the negative side. That means that I am slipping it uh, forward, okay? And then I will start it right around here. And you can tell where it's gonna start. In the top left portion of the whole viewer, you will see her legs, and then you'll see her shirt in the right part of that. That's how you know where it starts and ends. So here's where it's gonna start now. And I just avoided doing all of this right here, okay? Instead of doing that, you just literally slip it with that tool. Very, very cool, all right? And I did not mean to rhyme, but I just did. So thank you for your time. All right, next up is gonna be the blade edit mode. And what it does is it's gonna make a cut on your clip. So you can cut your clip wherever you want. I'll cut right there and right here, okay? And then I can delete the middle portion of this like that. So you just make a simple cut like so, which is really nice. The snapping tool is up next. So when that is enabled, what it will do is when you move your playhead around the timeline, it will snap to the beginning or the end of a clip. So any endpoints, okay? Also, if you have a marker on your timeline, maybe multiple markers, it will also snap to your markers. So this is good for when you just want to get to an exact mark or endpoint on a clip, which happens a lot. When this snapping is disabled, it's just like you would think. It moves it around very smoothly and it doesn't snap to an endpoint. You can move it however you like. If you want to get a very precise edit, like at the very end of this, normally when you have snapping on, it will snap to it, you know? But if you turn it off, it won't snap to it and then you can zoom in and then like kind of get like on a very, very, very precise size frame, an exact frame for whatever reason. And then the link selection is next. So this chain sort of uh, icon, this will allow you to separate your video from the audio. So let me show you that real quick. So I have it selected, which means that the video and audio will be um, moving together. Okay. That's what that means. It means it's going to be linked together. So all these clips are linked together when that is selected. And if I were to turn this off, disable that linked selection tool, then every single clip will be separated from its audio portion. So this video portion can be moved around separately as well as this one. So it's really nice how you can just like easily turn this on and off and then separate those video tracks from the audio tracks. You can make uh, J cuts or L cuts very, very easily. So next up is going to be the position lock. And just like it sounds, it's going to lock all of your video tracks and audio tracks. So let's say you have a ton of clips on your timeline like this and you want to make a certain edit, but you do not want to mess 
mess up your video, what this is helpful for is when you enable this, is it doesn't let you move any of the clips around. It, it locks all of your tracks because maybe you would accidentally move stuff around. Now you can always undo, but it's just a little helpful tool to prevent you from moving anything in the first place. So that's really handy. Okay, so next up is the flag tool. So this guy right here, basically select a clip and then you click on that flag and what will happen is you can open up the media pool and that flag will show up on the clip as well in the media pool so that way you can organize your clips in the media pool you can color code them however you want and so next up is the marker tool which is next to flags and this will put a marker on your timeline like so so that if you're editing and you want to take a break you can come back to the spot that you're editing so that you don't forget and you can also actually put a marker on the clip itself so that way if you move your clip around you won't lose that spot on the clip and when you double click on that marker you can name it whatever you want you can add notes you can add keywords and you can choose whatever color next up is going to be the zoom tools so the first zoom tool that you see is going to be the full extent zoom and this is going to be like the default zoom to fit tool where you can see all of your clips all at once on the timeline and then the default tool for zooming in is this one right next to it called detail zoom so when you click on that it's going to zoom in to wherever your playhead is at and then you can get a precise look at your clip and then this next one the custom zoom is tied to this lever right here, which as you can tell is zooming in and out of my timeline, but I'm able to zoom in all the way or zoom out all the way. And then this button custom zoom is tied to it. So if I wanted to click on full extent zoom to just zoom out, like just to get everything to fit on the screen. And then I want to get back to that same zoom that I just did. I click on that button custom zoom, and then it brings me right back to it. So next up is going to be your volume button. So this is just going to be your playback volume. It's not going to be the exported volume. What you can also do is click on the dim button and this will automatically just reduce reduce the volume by a certain amount every single time that you click on that. So if you're editing and someone like walks into your room, you want to be able to, you know, edit your video and hear them at the same time, you can dim it very easily by clicking on that button. And uh, you might like just doing that anyway, if your video is too loud. Uh, and the next step is going to be the timeline view options on the very far left right here. So this is going to allow you to create tabs for all of your timelines, if you have multiple timelines that you're working with, click on this button and then click on this one where it says uh, stacked timelines. So select that, it'll be highlighted and uh, there will be tabs here and each of these tabs will bring you to another timeline that you have in your project. And maybe you wanna copy something over from one timeline to the current one that you're editing. You can easily do that by clicking on it rather than going up here to the drop down and then clicking on it, it's just one step closer or one step faster to uh, being able to copy stuff from one timeline to another. Or just if you wanna watch something from the other timeline to re remember what you edited in the past. And then what you can also do in this timeline view options stuff is uh, you can heighten the tracks, okay? All of the tracks all at once, in fact, which is really cool. It makes it very handy when you have multiple tracks and you just wanna lower them all so that you can see them all at once. All right, so there you have it. All of these tools are very, very handy. They all serve a specific purpose and can speed up your editing very, very well. I hope you enjoyed. If you are confused about anything, be sure to ask me any questions in the comment section down below. I will be happy to answer Answer to the best of my ability. I do look at all of my comments, so don't be shy. Uh, if you have any friends or family that are also learning this software, be sure to share this video with them so that they can also learn all of this stuff. And uh, be sure to like the video and subscribe if you would like to support the channel so that I can make more of these DaVinci Resolve tutorials in the future. And without further ado, I will see you guys next time.